In this episode, I'm going to share my top five things to do when your business is slow to generate leads and fill your future sales pipeline. Welcome to the Savvy Agent Podcast, where we help real estate agents build a thriving business so they have financial freedom in their life without having to work 24-7. I'm your host, Heather Wright. Now let's get to it. If your January is anything like mine, your month might be off to a slow start. So what can you do during the slow times of your business to make sure your spring sales pipeline is filled? I'm going to share my top five things I do when business is slow that make sure our sales pipeline is filled during the spring and quite frankly, the rest of the year. But one thing you're going to notice is that making phone calls is not on my list. Of course, I know that making phone calls is a really great way to stay in touch with people that you already know. And, you know, it's an easy way to pick up business too, but I don't want to be a telemarketer and that's my choice. So whether or not you choose to make phone calls to your past clients and, or your sphere of influence, you can still do the following things with great success. Okay. My first tip is to send an equity update to all of your past clients. An equity update doesn't have to be a CMA. Actually, it's better if it's not, but send your past clients, the active pending and sold listings within, I don't know, 30 days, 90 days, whatever makes the most sense within a quarter mile, maybe a half mile radius of their house and include a note explaining why you're sharing. At the very least, your name showing up in their inbox is going to trigger a thought about you and it's going to accomplish top of mind awareness. At the very best, they're going to respond and say, Hey, I want you to come list my house for sale. In between, you'll find you'll have some great conversations with people. Yes. Conversations on email without picking up the phone at all. My second tip is checking in with your old leads. Did you show someone a house right before Thanksgiving and you haven't heard boo from them since? Well, maybe you forgot they existed too. Go through the leads in your CRM and touch base with everyone. Now that the holidays are over, they might be ready to get serious about house hunting. If you don't use a CRM, then go through your appointment calendar for November and December. Who did you give time to in the last couple of months that needs your attention now? Once you've figured out who those people are for November and December, go back to October, September, August, just keep going back. The third thing I do when business is slow and I want to make sure that my sales pipeline is full is I myself go house hunting. Do you have a buyer that can't find the right place and you've seen everything already on the MLS? Well, what are they looking for? Is it a three bedroom, two bathroom, three car garage up to X amount of money? Can you share that and post it on social media and ask people if they know where you can find the right property? Now, of course, you'll have realtors who are going to say, oh my gosh, check my listing at one, two, three main street. Well, that's fine. And maybe it's something that you missed, or maybe it's something that you hadn't really paid proper attention to. And it's the best fit for your client and they love it. Although maybe somebody that you're friends with on Facebook or Instagram or wherever is going to say, Oh my gosh, I was thinking about selling my house. Wouldn't that be cool? You could also send a letter to homes matching the basic criteria in the buyer's target neighborhood. Now, personally, I wouldn't do this, but you totally could. You could knock on doors in the target neighborhood and hand a flyer out with the type of home that you're looking for. Who knows? Maybe the person that's thinking they might want to sell will raise their hand and you'll get a listing out of the deal too. And the reason I don't want to do door knocking, well, I've got lots of reasons, but the main one is the weather. It's either too hot or too cold. So it's 21 degrees right now. It's cold. It's dark early. I can give you reasons all day long on why I'm not going to do door knocking. But again, that's my choice. So if it's something that works for you or is something that interests you, then you should should try it because my business is set up to be designed to work for me and you should set your business up to work for you. The worst case scenario, when you go house hunting, looking for a certain type of property for one of your buyers is that you spin your wheels trying to find your buyer a home, but that's your job. So good work. The best case, you'll get three deals out of it. One for your buyer, one for the person you got to sell their house and one for the house that seller just bought. Who knows? Maybe you do the same house hunting process for them and it turns into a domino closing of more than three houses. My fourth tip of things you can do to work on your business when things are slow is to look back at the CMAs that you did in the last one to three years. So I keep a copy of my CMAs in a Dropbox folder organized by the year. So I can easily go through the archives and look up the people that 
but did not list their house with me. Of course, I want to check the MLS to make sure they didn't list it with someone else. And if they didn't, then I'll reach out, check in, see if they're thinking 2022 might be their year to make a move. And then you can also offer to do an updated market analysis that you can email them, or you could be proactive with that and just message them and say something along the lines of, oh my gosh, this real estate market is so crazy. Do you know how much more money you could get today than what you would have gotten had you sold in 2020? Something along those lines. And my fifth tip is freshen up your 2022 marketing strategy. Of course, direct outreach is going to get you the best and fastest results, but it's also important to take time to work on your business and brushing up your marketing for the year will pay off in the end. Do you need to be more visible on social media? Do you need to be more consistent with your follow-ups or reaching out to your past clients or whatever your marketing plan is? Do you need to get and use a CRM? Do you need to create or improve your listing packet or your buy? Fire packet? What about lead magnets? Do you even have any? Do you need to learn a new lead source? Do you need to update your written communication, drip emails for new leads, canned emails for current clients? Now, I also want to note that if you decide that your time is best spent brushing up your marketing strategy for the year, that's great. It's always a good idea to work on your business, but you also have to work in your business. So if the things that you're doing are preventing you from being visible, they're preventing you from having conversations with people who actually need and want your help, don't do that. You are in business to make money. And when you spend your time getting ready to do the things that are going to help you make the money, well, now you've just created an obstacle for yourself to get past. So make sure that you're not spending all of your time working on your business, that you're actually working in your business, doing some of that direct outreach and providing value to your clients. And if you just want to get in touch with your past clients, but you're not into sending equity updates, well, I have a free guide that you can download at Savvy agent.co slash past dash client dash resource. And that link is kind of funny. So I'll make sure that it's in the show notes so you can easily just click it, but you can download that cheat sheet, which will have lots of ideas on things that you can use as conversation starters with your past clients or people, you know, without sounding kind of salesy, without having to say, Hey, aunt Sally, do you know anybody who might want to buy or sell a house in 2022 that needs my services? Like aunt Sally doesn't want to have that conversation with you and nobody else does either. So instead, Instead, if you use the past client conversation starter cheat sheet, then you can have a totally different conversation with Aunt Sally that results in her leaving the conversation, feeling like you are the best realtor she has ever met. Of course, she loves you because she's Aunt Sally, but also she's going to be confident in your skills and your ability to care about your clients that she's going to recommend you to all of her friends and referrals are a great way to get business. That happens when you provide value and leave people feeling good. So again, you can get that free resource at savvyagent.co slash past dash client dash resource. We'll see you next week.